May I add my welcome to that of Dean Matt. It's wonderful to see you here this morning. Particularly relieved to see Charlie and Ali and their uh, training incumbents and Nick and uh, Tim. And also uh, thinking of Tim Bateman as well from St. Luke's with whom he'll be working. And to know that uh, by the help of technology we're filming so that those of you who are watching this later, I hope, will also be praying and be uh, open to the Holy Spirit, who is the active person in this ordination service. Thank you particularly to all those at the cathedral who have enabled uh, these services to take place, all the staff, uh, both the residentary canons, the dean, and all the vergers and everyone who keeps the place clean and open for public worship and special occasions like today. Delighted that Canon Mark Price is our preacher this afternoon and also that our director of ordinance is here, uh, all part of the team that enable vocations to develop lay unordained and then those that come to this moment of being ordained as a priest in the church. If you're following the service, then it's all in our order printed out today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope which we call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father. Peace be with you. And also with you. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given a variety of ministries. Priests are ordained to lead God's people in the offering of praise and the proclamation of the gospel. They share with the bishop in the oversight of the church, delighting in its beauty and rejoicing in its well-being. They are to set the example of the good shepherd always before them as the pattern of their calling. With the bishop and their fellow presbyters, they are to sustain the community of the faithful by the ministry of word and sacrament, that we all may grow in the fullness of Christ and be a living sacrifice acceptable to God. Bishop David, I present these persons to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. Charles Butler of St. Bartholomew Edgbaston. Alison Herbert of St. Luke's Birmingham. Archie and Simon, thank you very much for your presentation. Have you whose duty it is to know these ordinances and examine them, found them to be of godly life and sound learning? We have. Do you believe them to be called to serve God in this ministry? We do. Uh, Paul, thank you very much indeed and for your part in this formation team. Uh, Charlie and Ali, do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do so believe. I do so believe. I invite the Archdeacon to confirm that the ordinance have taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration of assent. Bishop David, the ordinance have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the sovereign and the oath of canonical obedience to the bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds 
and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And those oaths and declarations were done in the glorious open air at Bishop's Croft on Friday afternoon, where all creation rejoiced, as well as those of us who were part of that. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are the kind of person who likes to plan ahead, this is not the gospel you would have expected to hear at your ordination. In Birmingham, the usual pattern is for the bishop to ordain in late June or July at the feast of Peter and Paul. There have been some disruptions. This is the gospel for Michaelmas, late September, when we remember Archangel Michael and all the angels of God. There is a most beautiful depiction of them in the west window as you leave. Jesus talks to Nathaniel about the angels. And he takes up the imagery of Jacob's dream in Genesis chapter 28, a story Nathaniel and the others know well. And Jesus says, I am the ladder between earth and heaven. Jesus, the bridge, the channel through whom God's grace and action flow. In this passage from John, we see Jesus doing what he always does, going out to others, drawing them in. In his teaching, his journeys, his conversations, his eating, his sacramental gestures of breaking bread and washing feet, even in his lonely death and unique resurrection, Jesus saves through relationship. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. His incarnation, his cross and resurrection, these are the ultimate connection God makes with the creation he loves. 
reflecting on the theology of priesthood, Bishop Graham Tomlin begins with an insight of Karl Barth about Jesus. If we see him alone, we do not see him at all. If we see Jesus, we see him with and all around him in ever widening circles, his disciples, the people, his enemies, and the countless millions who have not yet heard his name. In this gospel, we see Jesus widening the circle from Philip to Nathaniel, and from Nathaniel out further, person to person, community to community. The ministry of priest, says Bishop Graham, is to make the space in which this widening out can happen. As our ordinal says, with all God's people, priests are to tell the story of God's love so that the Lord's children may be saved through Christ forever. And all around us at the moment, we are seeing the circles of God's love widening as wise stewards help local Christian communities work through the traumatic disruption of pandemic into new ways of relating, new ways of connecting. The Good Shepherd helps the church always to ask the question in every situation, how do we widen the circle? With whom do we connect to share this story of God's love? Yet the mission of Jesus is something more wonderful even than widening circles. Jesus says to Nathaniel, do you believe in me because I saw you? You will see greater things than these. You will see heaven opened. You will see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In and through Jesus, our relationships are not only with one another, the ever-widening circles. Through Christ, crucified and risen, our relationship is also with the communion of saints and with the angels of God. It is both widening circles and spiritual sphere. Listen again to this rather mysterious Michaelmas collect that the bishop has prayed. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Christ, the story of God's love reaches out to the whole created order. And our vocation is to have a share with the call to all spiritual beings to enjoy God forever, to know God and praise God and serve God as the angels do, and to receive their ministry as even Jesus did. You recall the prayer of St. Paul for the Ephesians. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God.
St. Catherine of Siena had a high view of ordained ministers. In her prayers, she heard God say, priests are my anointed ones, and even angels have no such dignity as I give to those whom I choose as my ministers, whom I call earthly angels. Those are terrifying words from a doctor of the church. But in the light of today's gospel, perhaps what we can hear Catherine say is an encouragement to minister in spheres as well as circles. To remember that angels are our colleagues as well as those in the ministry team or PCC or deanery chapter. That it does not all depend on us. And though we are earthly angels, what we're called to do is to foster the kind of community that Jesus built, communities of prayer and contemplation, as well as mission and outreach, communities in which, like the angels, we can be touched by God's love deep in our souls, high in our minds, in which there is space to seek God's face, wait upon God's will in silence, utter God's praise, enjoy being loved by God, a church of spheres as well as circles. Amen. as we reflect on what Mark has been sharing with us. So you will find in the prayer that follows many of those themes and many more. Priests are called to be servants and shepherds among the people to whom they're sent with their bishop and fellow ministers, they're to proclaim the word of the Lord and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. They're to be messengers, sentinels, and stewards of the Lord. They're to teach and to admonish, to feed and provide for his family, to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations, and to guide them through its confusions, that they may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptize new disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to walk with them in the way of Christ, nurturing them in the faith. They are to unfold the scriptures, to preach the word in season and out of season, and to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table and lead his people in worship, offering them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for all in need. They are to minister to the sick and to prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people, that the whole church may be built up in unity and in faith. And Charlie and Ali, we trust that you are fully determined, by the grace of God, to give yourself wholly to his service, that you may draw his people into that new life which God has prepared for those who love him. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do so accept them. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the gospel of truth? By the help of God, I will. Will you lead Christ's people in proclaiming his glorious gospel so that the good news of salvation may be heard in every place. By the help of God, I will. Will you faithfully minister the doctrine and sacraments of Christ as the Church of England has received them, so that the people committed to your charge may be defended against error and flourish in the faith? By the help of God, I will. Will you, knowing yourself to be reconciled to God in Christ, Strive to be an instrument of God's peace in the church and in the world. By the help of God, I will. Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and example to Christ's people? By the help of God, I will. Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? By the help of God, Will you accept and minister the discipline of this church and respect authority duly exercised within it? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known among all whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinands are ready to undertake, and you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? It is. It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. we will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? We will. we will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust that is now to be committed to your charge. Remember always with thanksgiving that the treasure now to be entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought by the shedding of his blood on the cross. It is to him that you will render account for your stewardship of his people. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray, therefore, that your heart may daily be enlarged and your understanding of the Scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit.
In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For David, our bishop, Anne, bishop of Aston, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For these ordinands, called to be priests in his church, let us pray to the Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the sick and suffering, for the poor and the hungry, and for all prisoners and captives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. praise and glorify you, almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn of all creation and head of the church. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death, and that having ascended into heaven, he has given his gifts abundantly to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants, whom we ordain in your name, to share as priests in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, the apostle and high priest of our faith, and the shepherd of our souls. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant, Charles, for the office and work of a priest in your church.
send down the Holy Spirit on your servant, Alison, for the office and work of a priest in your church. Through your Spirit, Heavenly Father, give these your servants grace and power to proclaim the gospel of your salvation and minister the sacraments of the new covenant. Renew them in holiness. Give them wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with those committed to their charge. In union with their fellow servants in Christ, may they reconcile that which is divided heal what is wounded, and restore what is lost. May they declare your blessings to your people. May they proclaim Christ's victory over the powers of darkness and absolve in Christ's name those to turn to him in faith. So shall a people made whole in Christ offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, our God and Father, to whom with the Son and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. And so receive this book as a sign of the authority given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. 
we welcome you as ambassadors for Christ. was very restrained of Charlie and Ali not to clap each other in the sort of Chinese tradition. Very restrained. I uh, hope that if you're watching this at home or somewhere else that you'll not only be clapping at this point but jumping around the living room and uh, uh, singing lots of alleluias. We now turn to our communion part of the service. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. He was lifted up for us on the cross that he might reveal your glory and draw all people to himself. You exalted him to your right hand on high, and through your Holy Spirit, you sent upon your people a rich diversity of gifts. From this royal priestly people, you raise up ministers to proclaim your word, to care for your people, and to be the stewards of your holy mysteries. You call them to serve the world, your Son redeemed, and build up his body, the church, to be his bride. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night he was betrayed, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, 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 Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Philip, St. Michael, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. the body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord of heaven, in this Eucharist, you have brought us near to an innumerable company of angels and to the spirits of the saints made perfect. As in this food of our earthly pilgrimage, we have shared their fellowship. So may we come to share their joy in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. As Dean Matt said at the beginning, we look forward to renewed hospitality as and when we're allowed. Meanwhile, we've uh, been strengthened with the foundations of our whole being, and for that we give many thanks. Uh, those of you who know the blessing, uh, the amens get louder as we go through, so pitch your first amen uh, appropriately, uh, because they really get louder and louder. And when the deacon dismisses us, there's a last one at the end. And the roof's pretty strong, so give it loads as we have our blessing from God. Because God, who is calling you and has called you and will go on calling you, is faithful. May the Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. May Christ who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.